Hello, everybody. Cryptocurrency, hype versus fact, it's not what you think. I want to start by telling you a personal story about me. Uh, I was born in Romania, in Eastern Europe, and um, unlike any of you in the audience, I grew up under the communist regime. Um, everything was government control. As kids, uh, you couldn't get out of the country. That wasn't allowed. My parents had to be part of the Communist Party. It was something that was mandated. And everything was rationed, from bread to milk. Everything that we had was rationed, and it was controlled by the government. For a family of three, you would get a, a particular portion every single month. That's all you would get. And we had to wait in line. Why did we have to wait in line? Because if we didn't get those necessities uh, before everybody else, then supply and demand, they were gone, and you couldn't get your ration for that particular month. So I have first experience with government controlling everything you do, and let me tell you, it was not pleasant. Um, later on in life, um, I actually wanted to give back to Romania, and um, we have a lot of tech talent in Romania. So. Um, hired a talented uh, person in Romania as a contractor to help us out and had to figure out a way to actually compensate them for their work. Well, it's not as easy as you might think. We tried Western Union, we tried banking, and everything was very slow, inefficient, and it cost a lot. So finally we said, why don't we try this cryptocurrency thing? We've, we've, we heard it's an actual global payment system and maybe I can just pay you in crypto directly. Well, that actually worked. But I want to talk about your historical beliefs. You, who here fears cryptocurrency? Raise your hand. Oh, not as many as I thought. But, okay, for the ones that fear cryptocurrency, I'm going to tell you that you should not fear cryptocurrency. Because during your lifetime, there is a 20% probability that fiat currency, your USD, and any other type of currency will fail. This is a historically proven fact. If we actually, the average lifespan of an individual is 75 years. The Roman Empire lasted for 1,500 years, and uh, 250 of that, it was their currency, right? But that was the longest running currency. Everything else failed within the 75 years. That's why there's the 20% probability. Our sister country over there, Yugoslavia, uh, they suffer from hyperinflation, and in essence, their currency became worthless. There are similar cases in Peru and everywhere around the globe. Currency will fail. I always get asked when, pe when I talk to people about cryptocurrency, what is it backed by? Because, you know, the U.S. dollar is backed by gold. Well, obviously, no. It hasn't been backed by gold since 1971, and it's actually not backed by a physical asset, as I'm going to show you a little bit later. Uh, here's what your U.S. dollar is, uh, is backed by. This is a debt. It's a debt to the U.S. government. All the, uh, all the, as you can see on there, it says right on your dollar bill that this is a note that just proves that you are in debt, and you're debt to, in, in debt to the government and to the banking system. So the current banking system. The banking system, obviously, is an intermediary. So uh, as an intermediary, what they do is they charge you exorbitant fees, and they don't want you to transact directly with the person that you can transact with, because that will put them out of business. So they don't want to do that. Now, we are all smart investors here. What do we do? We diversify. So probably your traditional investor investments right now look something like that. You might have a mortgage, you might have a 401k, you might have some annuities, some bonds, forex. But you know what? All of those are diversified within the same bucket that's owned by the banking system and it's owned by the government. So there's an alternative to that, alternative investments. Or you can call it that way. Or if you're a cryptocurrency believer, this is a separate basket. And within that basket, you can see Bitcoin, Zcash, Monero, just to name a few of the cryptocurrencies. Now, when I first told my parents that I've gotten into cryptocurrency, my mom told me, you know, I always told you you're multiplied with minus one, and you always have to do everything backwards. And my dad said, please do not sell the house for Bitcoin. So that's all he knew about it. And obviously, none of that happened, but with, I did diversify by using different tokens. And I'm going to talk more about those tokens. Now, what is the future of your investments going to look like? It's going to look something like this. You're still going to have 
your IRA, you're still going to have your mortgage, but those are going to be the things that are not going to last the test of time. Why are they not going to last the test of time? Because they are backed by something that does not have intrinsic value, by something that is debt to the government. So I believe that cryptocurrency will be around. This is the future. This is what we're going to be looking at, and it does have intrinsic value, and this is what we're going to be using to pay for everything in the future. Uh, even if you're familiar with macroeconomics, uh, Milton Friedman, he is a macroeconomist that actually won the Nobel Prize. He said, I think the internet is going to be one of those major forces for reducing the role of the government, and the only thing that's missing that will soon be developed is reliable e-cash. What is e-cash? Those are virtual currencies. Those are cryptocurrencies, tokens. That's what, virtual e that's what reliable e-cash is. Now, in the crypto community, we refer to the USD or any other type of currency, whether it's euro or lei or anything else, as fiat money, fiat currency. That is the currency that is backed by the government, is declared legal tender. However, it's not backed by any physical commodity. So just want to make sure you guys all have that. Um, also, from a macroeconomic perspective, uh, The Economist, which is a publication that's actually owned by the Rockefellers, which, by the way, also own the Bank of London, so they are part of the banking system, uh, they predicted in 2008, this is the cover from 2008, that there's going to be a world currency. And look at that currency. You see the fiat currency in flames, and on top of that, you're going to see rising from its ashes, it's the virtual currency. And on that particular coin, it says 2018, because we believe that 2018 is the year of mass adoption for cryptocurrency. Guess it remains to see if we're right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, ultimately, it's a market that you can't ignore. It is a $330 billion market as it stands today. And this is how the market looks like. It has about 2,000 different tokens. And look at those tokens. You probably know some of them. You might know Bitcoin. You might know Litecoin. You might know a few. You might know Ripple that's actually using the banking system. And then you might know some that's used for different purposes, recreational drugs, for example, right? Uh, but think of each token as a share within a company. That's what it actually represents. And in fact, when we look at those tokens, we analyze them as such. What is this token doing? Do they have a good team? Do they have a good technology? Do they have a product that actually serves a need? And obviously, if they meet all these three criteria, then it's a good coin. It's a good token. If not, probably not one that's going to last the, uh, the test of time. For example, Dogecoin over there that was created as a joke for a Japanese, uh, for, after a Japanese dog probably won't last, probably won't be along, around. But, you know, there are others that are, that are probably going to do a lot better. Um, so I bet, you know, back in the day, block, the blockchain is the underlying technology for cryptocurrency. Back in the day, blockchain is often compared to the internet. Because back in the day when we had mainframes, we didn't think that today we're going to be using our phones for everything, right? We're, we're going to be using our phones to pay our bills. We're going to be using our phones for uh, it's pretty much a small device. And everything's going to be digitized. So we have our records digitized. We have our medical records digitized. So why not virtual currency? Why can that not be digitized? So obviously, naturally, it can. And it's already been created. Now, how will the future of cryptocurrency in my mind look like? It will still be your money, but it will be smarter. You're going to be in control of your own money. Instead of keeping it in your current wallet that you have today, you're going to actually keep your money in a digital wallet or in cold storage, in an off-storage secure device. And we're going to get into digital asset management because these tokens have intrinsic value and they are digital assets just like any other asset that you own today, a home, any other type of asset. Now, what's interesting is that the US government and the banking system have classified cryptocurrency as commodities. What does that mean? Oil is a commodity. Anything that's a commodity can be traded. Hence, anything that's a commodity is something that you're going to be using every day. 
So I believe that eventually we're going to be we're going to end up paying with cryptocurrencies for everything that we do in life. Now, what's the future of blockchain, the underlying technology for cryptocurrency? The future of blockchain, uh, we're going to see more and more products built on the blockchain that will actually serve different purposes and for different industries. We're going to see healthcare, we're going to see utilities, but the first one that's going to be revolutionized is going to be the banking and the financial system. That's what's going to be revolutionized. I always get people that are fearful of cryptocurrency. And I wanted to show you that it's really not that complicated. It is, you know, a simple transaction from one wallet to another. It's actually more secure, it's transparent, and it's something that, that you can see every single time. And there's a permanent record of it on the blockchain. So that's what I'm going to show you in a minute here, how I'm transacting with a friend from one digital wallet to another. And the reason why this is so powerful is because it happens in an instant. It doesn't cost a lot. There is a small transaction fee, as you'll see, but very, very small. And you're, in essence, moving digital assets really quickly. So let's go to the video. OK, now we're going to show you a simple transaction from one digital wallet to another. Let's say I owe some Litecoin that I need to send back to my friend. Um, I'm using a Exodus Eden digital wallet. He's using just an Exodus wallet. And I'm going to send $50 worth of funds. So here we are. We're going to just click send. And I'm going to put the value here. I'll just put in USD, let's say 25, and the Litecoin address, and off it goes. Yes, we are sure. Success! It's been sent, and as you can see, it arrived immediately into the other uh, wallet, making it 75 $74. Of course, we've been charged a transaction fee, but did you see how fast that was to just send that particular amount from one wallet to another? Now, um, that's it, uh, folks. So, obviously, just really easy, just like handing somebody a piece of paper, but you're doing all of this electronically. Digital wallet to digital wallet. So, you shouldn't fear cryptocurrency. It is that easy to transact. And if you haven't invested yet, this is the time to do it. Actually, the market is low. Thank you so much.